Ladies and gentlemen, Tesla stock is up almost 3% today, heading into a very important day coming tomorrow, and that is going to be CPI. So we're going to go over everything you need to know about Tesla and S&P 500, my concerns that I have about tomorrow and what is happening today in the markets. If you guys like the sounds of that or you like the sound of making money, if you are someone that wants to grow your portfolio in 2023, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel this is definitely the place to be so let's get into it first things first with tesla we continue in this bottoming formation the stock continuing higher here today now the stock is roughly around 122 dollars per share depending on when you guys see this video obviously things can change the volume is still super super high and well above the historical average for tesla in between 150 and 250 million shares continue to trade hands now today you're seeing a really risk on kind of environment you're seeing amc you're seeing gme you're seeing a lot of your riskiest stocks and even besides meme stocks a lot of your higher multiple stocks a lot of your growth stocks that are outperforming the markets today the nasdaq is up about one percent at the time of recording this video so these stocks up three to ten percent is really outperforming and a lot of this has to do with positioning for 2023 and this notion that the fed will still pivot in 2023 when the fed is telling you that they are absolutely not going to and I don't think they're going to and i don't think you really want them to because historically speaking when the Fed's raising rates, the markets can perform okay, right? They, they can perform pretty good. Some of the best times to be in the stock market was actually when the Fed was raising rates. It's not until the Fed cuts rates that the markets react very negatively. And that is because if the Fed has to cut rates to spur economic activity, the situation's probably already bad. And if they were raising rates that whole time they probably over tightened and we're going to look at recent history examples from about 2000 right the fed was raising rates 1998 until november of 2000 and the federal funds rate was at 6.51 percent they had to cut that all the way down to one point well really about one percent in 2003 and 2004 they started to raise rates again consistently until about J june of 2007 and then they started cutting rates because shit hit the fan right brought the federal funds rate down to zero in just about one year so april 2009 the federal funds rate was at about zero and that's actually about two years uh, my apologies there caps rate caps rates at about zero started raising rates again and then in about 2019 they started cutting rates again and then you got the covid crash now we're raising rates again and ultimately when the fed cuts rates it's not going to be the best environment for the markets the question is do you go into a 2000 or 2007 8 kind of recession and i don't know the answer to that historically when you've had yield curve inversion so steep like when you get paid out more interest for investing your money for six months rather than 10 years you have always seen a recession based off of that every single time so this could either be the one time in history that does not happen or we could follow suit with a recession and at that point when the fed's cutting rates it's actually when you might want to get out of the markets believe that or not so the markets are really rallying off this notion the fed pivot is coming but long story short the pet the fed pivot might not be a good thing so we might actually have more room to rally now rather than later and a lot of this potential rally is obviously going to fall on economic data it's going to fall on earnings because believe it or not even after the move that we have seen to the downside in 2022 a lot of stocks are still over valued and that brings up a big debate of where are earnings going to go so if the s p 500 it had about 225 dollars of earnings last year that we were expecting at one point about 235 dollars of earnings 
for 2023? Well, some expe expectations are for about a 10% drop in earnings. And I think that's pretty reasonable. Bringing EPS for the S&P 500 for full year S&P 500 earnings to around 2 hundred dollars well if you times 200 by about 17 i think that's a fair multiple i think that's kind of a little too too fair but 200 dollars times 17 that's 340 dollars on the s p as a fair value you could obviously tweak this around as you'd like if you say hey the market should only be valued at 15 times because the federal funds rate is five uh, percent well that puts your fair value multiple at 300 on the s p 500 so that's why earnings are going to be so 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 very important in this next quarter ladies and uh gentlemen and we're gonna start to get really earnings she wants a, she wants a fruit snack guys that's why earnings are going to be so very important in this next quarter because if earnings are bad, you're really going to see expectations get reset, and it's going to be those full year expectations, and that's what could really bring you down to more of a fair value. Right now, the markets, let's say we're expecting a uh, uh, $215 of EPS for the S&P 500. You times that by 17, you're sitting at 365, right? If you go ahead and do 225 times 17, you're sitting at 382 so the markets right now are like firmly uh pricing in some pretty good earnings for 2023 uh $235 of EPS at a 17 times multiple I believe the multiple is like 18 percent but nonetheless the markets right now are overvalued for where the federal funds rate is for where the state of the economy is you have to be careful right now there's a much greater risk to reward ratio uh going short at these levels or buying puts at these levels but does that mean some of your most beaten down stocks can not rally absolutely not some of your most beaten down stocks have already rallied right think of facebook think of netflix those stocks that really seen it the worst out of the mega cap stocks in 2022 those have been the stocks that have rallied back the most tesla they really seen that end of the year sell-off a lot of that tax loss harvesting so i do think they will be one of you know the stocks to react to the upside first especially if they can prove that their fundamentals are still together they will be rewarded for that and i do think that is somewhat what you are starting to see right now a little bit more positioning into tesla now with the inflation expectations that we are having for tomorrow all of this data comes out at 8 30 in the morning the inflation rate year over year we are expecting that to come in at 6.9 percent last last uh, month it was 7.1 percent year over year core inflation rate year over year we're expecting 5.9 percent uh, last reading was 6%, and I think this is where you have the most chance for an actual CPI B. I think the expectations are pretty low on the year-over-year -year basis. Now, I think expectations are pretty high on the month-over-month -month expectations, and I think that's going to be more important to investors is how fast is inflation going down from last month and the month before that. Not necessarily, you know, what was the inflation rate last November, what's the inflation rate this november i don't think that's going to matter as much that headline reading who knows could be wrong guys people are going to pick it apart coming tomorrow morning but the inflation rate month over month for december we're expecting that to be a negative 0.1 percent last month was a positive 0.1 percent i think there's just a lot of expectations that inflation fell very hard from november to December. If you come out at a 0.1% again or a 0%, that's not good enough. That's not good enough for expectations. And even the core inflation rate, excluding food and energy, you're expecting that to come in at a positive 0.1%. Last month was 0.2%. So I think this is a little bit more reasonable, right? A little bit more. But still, I think even if you came out at 0.2%, it's not going to be good enough. So your expectations are too high. And I think the markets have already started to rally based off of an expected beat to CPI. So if we've already baked that in, even if it happens, you might not get that much of a rally. If you have baked in a beat to CPI and you don't beat CPI, that's where you could set up for a very big drop guys so 
I do think the overall consensus is for CPI beat, and that's a better thing rather than not, but it does set you up for a disappointment rather than expecting a high CPI and getting a low CPI. So hopefully that makes some sense to everyone out there. Now, as far as Tesla and the S&P 500 and key levels you definitely want to watch for on the S&P 500 itself, you are looking very good, guys. You are almost above the two. 100 day moving average 200 day moving average uh sitting here at about 394 64 100 day moving average at uh 384.91 and the 50 day moving average at 388.84 you're above both of these smaller moving averages almost above the 200 day moving average if you break out above the 200 day moving average that is a change of trend now the unfortunate part about all of this is that you are pretty high and if things do get rough you could easily break under these moving averages and go back into this bearish formation in a very quick amount of time and uh morgan wilson over at uh or Mike Wilson, over at Morgan Stanley, he's the chief investment officer, he just put out a note last night saying that if CPI disappoints and earnings disappoint for Q1, the S&P 500 could go back down to, you know, that $300 level, that 300 to 330 level, and that would be a drop of about 23% from current levels now if we take a look at the tesla and look at the major levels obviously we're very uh close to this multi-year support level around a hundred and ten dollars that's where we bottomed out at and we're in this bottoming formation you can see a lot of bullish indicators that did come through a macd bullish indicator rsi outside bar and an engulfing line all of these bullish indicators being from tesla being so oversold for quite a while guys tesla was statistically on the rsi oversold for like three trading weeks now you're above that you're at 38.19 neutral is 50 so you're still oversold you're not even getting close to a bullish rsi as of yet um and historically speaking when tesla has been this oversold and you have bought tesla you have made money even when you bought tesla at the 30 on the rsi you have made a lot of money not to mention full-on capitulation in tesla stock so could the stock go lower if cpi is a big disappointment tomorrow absolutely if you're in this for the long term should you buy tesla stock right now absolutely i'm not a financial advisor i'm not a financial planner all of that good stuff this is my personal opinion i do think the numbers make sense the valuation makes sense if tesla can grow 30 to 50 percent in 2023 and i think they can you're even seeing higher demand over in china since they have been opening up and i think that was really a catalyst that a lot of people did not expect right away they did, did not expect china to open up in q1 they were thinking maybe q2 q3 depending how strict the government wanted to be but not q1 and they did not expect all of this demand to come in from china uh, to see wait times that are weeks longer is a positive thing for tesla guys so that is pretty much going to be all for this video that is what you guys need to know get ready for tomorrow leave your qu comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section what do you think cpi is going to come out tomorrow let me know that information thank you for watching most importantly enjoy the rest of your day and i'll see you in the next one